Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrylic Asylum. I'm Mike Ferris. In this video, I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step Halloween Jack. So make sure you stay tuned to the end so you don't miss any lesson details and check out the description box below for a list of colors and materials. So starting off, I'm gonna take permanent black right out of the tube and just apply it right straight to my eight x 10 pre-stretch canvas that I'm using. And with my roller, I'm just gonna apply this and cover the entire thing, borders, the sides and all. Now giving it a quick dry on medium heat. And now I drew out the image on an eight and a half by 11 inch paper and then took wax transfer paper and a stylus to trace it out onto my eight by 10 inch canvas. And if you need additional details, I did put a short three minute video in the description box for you. So starting off, I have a number 10 flat brush and on my palette is cad yellow, permanent black, and as always titanium white. So I'm gonna take some of this yellow and some of this black to it, just a teeny bit, and that's just to dull it down a hair. And now some white to bring that up. And so with this value, I'm gonna go ahead and start blocking in for the furthest object, which is the moon. Now I've got my number four natural bristle brush here. And with that, I'm gonna take pure titanium white and I'm gonna create the middle here very bright and drag it out using less pressure on my brush and just bring it into that other yellow and blend that in very smoothly. So as you can see right here, I'm not worried about covering up my lines. I'm just gonna go for it because with dark color going back over light, it's just one coat and I can easily just bring that right back over. It's when you're doing light on top of dark and you wanna be able to avoid any dark that's going outside of its lines, especially on the light color because it takes a lot of light colors to cover up dark stuff. So you wanna be careful with that. But when going the other way, like I said, it's just fine. So I'm just gonna go over all this and not worry about it. And now just dusting this out very lightly as I come outside. And again, just more titanium white. I wanna brighten this up and do the same thing. So now I'm gonna get this light yellow color here, just adding a little bit more titanium white to the value we put on first. And that's in between the yellow and the white. And where those two meet, I wanna take this value in between and dust that back over this white. And this is gonna really help soften this blend up even more. So now I've got my 3 8 angle brush. As you can see, I can use just the tip of it because all those other brushes are out of the way to make precise lines in there. So now I'm gonna load it up with permanent black. And as you can see, I can come down and where that fuzzy line is, I wanna take it all the way to that line and make it a very crisp line. And so with just the tip of it, as you can see, I can make a very nice precise line. Now taking this angle brush here and doing all that I can do with the tip of it. And I found that this is a really small area, so now I'm going to my script liner brush. And with this, you wanna have lots of water on this kind of brush. If not, it's not gonna go very well. And you can go out of your lines really easily with really fuzzy lines. And for this, you want this very crisp because it's gonna show this nice silhouette against this moon glow. Okay, with permanent black now my number two flat brush i'm going to take and let's bring this out that got covered up so again this dark color over light is all you need is one coat and of course the other way around you need several coats of light to cover dark so i wasn't worried about that just going to take that up what i don't want to do is take this black outside of its lines and get onto that light color again because as i just said it just takes a lot of time to cover up dark with light so I'm just going to redefine this and just fill this in Okay, now getting some black and some white now to make this mid-tone gray color. And this is just gonna be what I use to block in for Mr. Jack here. Thank you. 
So as I do the eyebrow now, I don't want to take it all the way up to that line there. I want to leave that dark for shadow and dimension. That gives a separation between the forehead and the eyebrow. So just playing these different gray tones back and forth now, I've just added more titanium white and I want it brighter down here because on top of this it's going to help to show the glow that I put down and have it show up a little bit better. So with a little bit of paint left on my brush, I want to take now and scratch that in behind him here and it just shows a little bit of that landscape and that hill coming down behind him. Okay, going back to that gray tone now, some black, some white, just kind of medium. And with that, let's go in and do the fingers and the hands now. So as I do the fingers, I want you to see how in between the knuckles here, I'm leaving that dark just a little bit like so. And that again creates more dimension and shows the finger details. Okay, more titanium white into that gray now. And let's make these fingers just a little bit brighter and bring these out just a little bit more. So as you can see up close, I did leave a little bit of a black line between the fingers and the tuxedo clothes there, and that just so those don't get lost in translation there. Okay, so just making some highlights now on the side of his clothes here. And again, just filling some stuff in with this. Okay, now I'm getting a clean script liner brush now. And with this, I'm gonna get some titanium white and a, just a touch of black, so it's this very light gray. And with lots of water, I'm gonna drag this down and these are gonna be the stripes down as clothes. And so if you're not comfortable with the script liner, you can use the edge of a small flat brush, say like a number two or smaller. And for me personally, I just like the script liner brush, but if you're not used to using it and you haven't used it very much, then it can be kind of difficult. The thing about this is I'm, I'm barely putting any pressure down and I'm letting just the very tip of it touch and drag it down very carefully. And I'm turning the bristles too as I do it because paint runs out pretty fast on these brushes. So again, lots of water, turning the bristles, using just the very tip of it to get these skinny lines and not pushing very hard at all. If you push too hard, it's very easy to make a big fat line because there is a lot of bristle there because of the length of it. So you really wanna be careful not to put all that bristle into these. 
and again just using the very tip of it. So just pure titanium white now and again lots of water and just using the very tip of the script liner I want to define the separation on his clothes here. So just going to take and make that line like so. So on my palette now, I've got phthalo blue and phthalo green, also some cad orange that we'll get to in a moment. So I'm just going to take some phthalo blue, some cad yellow, a little bit of white to that, and a little bit more yellow, and now some permanent black to dull that down, and now some more black. And I'm looking for this very light, sort of muted green color in a way. And this is just going to go up here on this landscape here, and I'm going to drag that down, and this will be the start of a glow that's showing from the moonlight on the hill here. So without cleaning now, taking some cad yellow and some white, and with this brighter value now, let's go up top and right where the moon's striking the hill, I want this to be the brightest, and I'll drag that down again using light pressure on my brush as I get down into that darker green. So now going into yellow and a little bit of black, dulling that yellow down a bit. And now more titanium white to make it even brighter now. And let's again go back up top and hit the brightest part of the hill. OK, 
Okay, now I'm taking my number four flat brush now, some white, some black, a little bit more black. I want this darker gray here, and I just want to extend his clothing out, just kind of out here on the hill where it got covered up a little bit. Now getting my other brush here, that natural bristle round for ah, number four brush and taking that light gray color that's black, a little bit of white. And I want to take this down sort of behind him and around these pumpkins that I have laid out. And this just shows again more moon glow effect on some of the landscape behind him. Okay, now with a clean brush, I'm getting some phthalo green, just a touch of phthalo blue, some cad yellow and some white into that. And I want this very vibrant green glowing color here. So to start off with, I'm gonna make this very, very light on my brush, just barely any paint at all. There's hardly anything. It's almost like there's no paint on my brush whatsoever and I'm just dry brushing this on. And of course, the more paint I load on my brush and also the more pressure I put on my brush, the more color it's gonna lay down and therefore it's gonna be less transparent. So what I'm gonna do is play these effects back and forth and in some ways it's gonna be heavier, in other places it's gonna be a thinner coat and also the value is gonna be changing here and there. So with all these different changes going on within this value of color, it's really gonna be the difference between looking like there's just green paint on them and then a glowing green light that's reflecting on him and that's what we want to accomplish with all these different changes. So now down here on the chin I've added a little bit more white and yellow as you can see it looks just a little bit brighter down there. Okay now just a teeny bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white and actually a little bit more white than that. So let's go up here now and right on the eye I want to make this very nice highlight here and this also helps to bring out some dimension and texture on that. Okay, and as I go on the fingers here, again, I don't want to cover up all that gray, so just a teeny bit of paint on the brush and just dry brushing over and giving it that transparent effect. Okay, now let's get some more yellow. Let's get some more phthalo green. Let's get some more white, more yellow. And again, this yellow and white really makes this green more vibrant. And right here on his white tuxedo part here where a glow would be emitting more light the most, I believe. Let's really come in here and make this very, very vibrant right here. So as you can see, it's a little bit more vibrant than all the rest of them. And again, this change right here really shows the realism of the green glow that's going on. So as you can see, those lines, they're still visible and we have that transparent effect by putting hardly any paint on the brush. So I could have used matte medium for this and matte medium makes colors transparent as well. But the problem is, is because this is such a small area and these are small details, it would have been pretty messy. So this is definitely another method for that, which is a lot cleaner.
Okay, and now with my number two flat brush, I'm just taking some titanium white into that same green color. And this is what I can do is just redefine these lines. And I decided to use the edge of this flat brush just to show you that there is another way to make these lines if you're not comfortable with that script liner. So I did that on purpose for your sake there, just to show you that. And I figure, well, what the heck, I'm just gonna go in here and just keep using it anyways. It's working just fine, so. This is another way you can bring this transparency back in case you do cover anything over. Okay, now taking some more yellow and some white to that phthalo green. Yellow, of course, to make it more vibrant and white to make it brighter. So with that, let's take this brighter, vibrant green now and go right underneath the chin. And again, this changes the value and shows more glowing effect here. And as I come up into that darker green there, I don't want to take it all the way up and cover it all up, but use less pressure on my brush. And now let's put some more of that right here as well. So up close, as you can see, all the different values of the green and all the different effects of lighter and heavier pressure that's been used and how that brings that realistic glow effect to life there. Okay, and again, more yellow to that phthalo green mixture. And this time, not making it brighter, but just more vibrant with that yellow and just going down the arm like so. Okay, and again, more yellow and more white to make it brighter and more vibrant. And let's go in now. And as you can see, it makes us even brighter like so. Okay, with a clean number two flat brush now, going in back into that gray, this time a little bit more titanium white, and I wanna enhance some highlight stuff on the face. Okay, now just turning my canvas for ergonomic reasons, just to get a better angle, and with more white now this time, I wanna go and highlight the edge of the eye here. This really makes it pop and shows more detail and dimension. Okay, and playing these gray tones back and forth, I wanna take some lights here, and now I wanna pick up more black and use some darks as well. So again, just changing some values back and forth, again, creating more texture and dimension, and making these pop just a little bit more. 
and I'll even go in there with some of that darker gray now and put it in between to show some of the details of the knuckles. And picking up more titanium white and no cleaning necessary yet. And right here, just going around the edge of the knuckles here between the fingers and the hand. And then just lightly dusting that down using less pressure on my brush and giving this sort of highlight separation. So with a clean brush now, still my number two flat brush and our trio of colors, that phthalo green, yellow, and white. And see how I'm, I'm just tapping all that color off my brush. Again, this is very, very light paint. And we're keeping this light and transparent, so on the hand a little bit there. Okay, and now with some gray and some white again. Clean brush again. I'm going to come in here on the fist that he's making and just fill this in. Now just grabbing permanent black and I want to go in there and use that to define the fist a little better like so. Okay now with my number two flat brush and again phthalo green, yellow, and white. Just gonna make a basic vibrant green and let's block in his ghost dog with this. So without cleaning now, just taking more titanium white and let's go in here and just brighten this up. And again, more titanium white to that green. And let's make a little bit brighter in here. Okay, back to that wonderful green color again. Yellow, white, little phthalo green. And in this case, more yellow and white. I want to make it brighter up here where there's a brighter glow going on. So as I put it up on top of his body like so, I want to take and run it on the outside. And if you've seen any of my videos on bokeh photography painting, then this is the same exact method. We're going to make this fuzzy line and bring it outside and sort of dust it out into that black. And so with that, that's going to create this transparent, glowing, ghost-like effect. Okay, let's darken this green color now. Let's take a little bit of phthalo blue into those colors. And with this darker value, I'm gonna show some shadow dimension and a little bit of body detail.
Okay, more white, a little bit more yellow. And with this very light color, let's make some eye details and just place in it here and there to show some of this glowing effect. And with that light green color again, let's just scratch that on just a little bit into his clothes up here. Okay, just getting that color again, phthalo green, yellow, white. And I want it brighter this time, a little bit more white to that. And just a little paint on the brush. And just gonna drag that into the body first. And as the paint runs out, I'm gonna take the rest of it and I wanna go on the outsides of all the edges of the dog and just create this fuzzy light effect again, creating more of that glow. Okay, now with a clean brush, again, my number two flat and more titanium white into that gray color this time. And again, I wanna reinforce some of the highlights up here. Okay, and with a clean brush now, going back to our vibrant green, adding more yellow and white into that phthalo green there, and going up the side of his garments there. So now I'm just taking some straight cat orange and a little bit of phthalo blue into that to dull it down just a hair, and let's just block in these pumpkins for now. Okay, no cleaning necessary, picking up more orange and now some white into that to brighten it up. And let's do some highlight stuff here and there. Okay, now I'm going to get some cad yellow now and just a touch of this cad orange to it. And now titanium white to bring that up. So with this value now, I'm just going to make the basic indication of some jack-o'-lantern cutouts. Okay, no cleaning necessary, just getting more titanium white, and I don't want to cover up all of that color, so if I can help it, I just want to place that white here and there, and just sort of brighten all that up. Okay, with a clean brush now, just going to get some phthalo blue, just a teeny bit of it into that orange to dull it down, and with that darker sort of brown orangish color. Let's just make a couple of lines and show some pumpkin details. Okay, now I'm just gonna get some cat orange now and a little bit of yellow to that. And with this value, let's block in for the nose on the dog.
So now just gonna get some orange, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, just more or less brightening up this same value and let's place that here as well. Okay, with a clean number two flat brush now, I want to redefine this mouth and just take some permanent black through that. Okay, now taking the edge of my number two flat now, and again, permanent black, and just making these vertical hashes through it. Okay, and with that vibrant green color, and again, just a teeny bit of that color on my brush, you can still see the fist through that. And again, this is the other way of making things transparent if you don't want to use that messy matte medium in small spaces like this. Okay, and just on the sleeve a little bit more, just touching it up here and there. Okay, and lifting it up so that I can get to this, and with that same value on my brush, just going to hit the edge of the mouth for a highlight like so. Okay, now permanent black and just going to redefine the mouth like so. Okay, so taking my script liner brush again, lots of water, titanium white. I'm going to sign this piece right here and I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on this. If you found this lesson interesting, fun, and inspirational and all that, then give this one a try and a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more video lessons I'll be putting out on a regular basis. And if you have questions and comments, please drop those down below. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, happy Halloween and happy painting everyone.